Hi and welcome back. Uh, today, right here, my mineral will come in so I can start on my forge. I've moved it from its normal outside into what's going to be, hopefully, when I get all this junk moved out of here, everything I'm going to start putting on my knife works in this bay over here that I'm creating under my pole barn or pole shed. It was supposed to be a you know, pole barn for hay storage, but it didn't work out that way. So anyway, so I get out of that little 10 by, 10 by 12 building right here and probably get probably at least double, if not a little bit more so space, maybe even triple since it won't have freezers in it. But anyway, here is my forge that I moved in here. And, uh, excuse me. So, anyway, what I'm going to be doing is putting mineral wool, which is spun rocks. And that's what it is. It's it's actually like lava and it's going to be kind of dense and it's fireproof, waterproof and it's supposed to be and it's sound deadening okay it comes I got a piece of 2x4 like this and this is what it looks like it's this is only one inch so I'm going to be cutting that up and putting wrapping that around it then covering it all with the uh, metal and uh, it's going to use well what I've got on hand is galvanized which will be okay since uh, it won't be shouldn't be exposed to the flames and I don't have to worry about anything no zinc poisoning or anything with that so so let me get to it I mean it's I'm just gonna cut back and forth in and out you know I'll do a little bit then show you that then first one thing and the other so I'll be back in a little bit okay I'm back now if you watched uh, me do some more some work before on vi previous videos notice this this right here is going to sit right on top of my forge. Let me put it down here. Goes right there. And then my down pipe is going to screw into this bell. Okay. Yeah. Right there. these two metal blocks are broken into four pieces okay and I really I, I really worked with that uh, refractory cement that I've got that I do my homoning with and hopefully it will it will do better this time I, I thinned it down so anyway here's my here's my uh, my down pipe. I took my carburetor, or yeah, carburetor, I guess that's what you could call it, off of it so that I could work on it. I didn't bring a, I need to bring a, go get a, yep, I need to go get the pipe wrench. Uh oh, them is loose right there. This ain't set up enough, which is okay. It'll be fine. It will be fine. That's tied in there. So that don't leak. These will come back. Now, this is why I done that. Right there. Now, I just need a, a wrench to tighten these. And I will tighten them equally. And then I will tighten this onto this because that won't leak. It's in the where it was before, so that's good. Then I can put my insulation right over top of it. All right, let me get some tools.
Okay, I'm back. Now, I decided that I'd just make it in in three pieces if I could. So that's what I what I done. So with this, uh, I've got sheep. I hadn't completely got over my sheet metal addiction that I that I had for so long when I worked as a HVAC man, building, making duct work and stuff, building fittings. So here's one side. It will go on like. Okay, let me see. I got it on there. Got that one piece on there. It's just stuck on there. Nothing else is done. No anything. So I don't have a sheet metal break here and all the, the fancy tools, which I'm living proof that you don't need. To bend this 90 right here, this long one, right here is front edge. I used my two and a half pound hammer. I should have used my tenon hammer. It's my sheet metal hammer. It's got a sharper fuller on it, or tenon. That's what we always call it, the tenon end. up to open up Pittsburgh locks, first one thing or another, or get down and beat. Uh, hopefully you can see it, but anyway, get down in there and beat like this right here. To, uh, to help get a, a line started where it'll start bending up. I just use that big fuller up. This one, like I said, the leathers come off of it and I don't, it don't, it don't feel good in my hand. It, the shock from it just tires me up when I hit, so I don't use it anymore. But I don't mean I can't. I mean, it's 16 ounce normal tin. Tin and hammers usually around 10. The, the small one that I had that uh, I let my son have and uh, two of the three of my boys uh, went into the HVAC business for a while and anyway so now I've got this, this side built and once I get it all fastened down I'll put the I'll put the mineral wool on it in a few minutes then this piece right here will be for the back. It's just straightened out so I can cut it. <laughs> Fix it in there. And this is for the other side. Should go right in there. I'll have to do a little notching right here like I did over here. But that's, other than that, that's fine. That's what it's supposed to go. Right there. These are just standard sheet metal tin, uh, snips. Uh, the green one's cut to the right, the red one's cut to the left. So if you're making, if you're thinking about buying a pair, the straight ones that cut straight are uh, yellow. And then uh, if you need, if you're cutting anything like this and you're cutting a sheet, You'll have to have two. You'll have to have to cut out a small furring strip through there, or you can buy. I uh, uh, don't remember what color the handles they got on, but they're called uh, they're aviation type uh, unit shears, but they're manually operated. They, they got they got two they got two legs on the on the bottom of them, and one from the top comes down, and they. And they go like this, and they cut a little quarter inch wide strip. Let's see. Yeah, they go this way. I'm sorry. The bottom one comes up. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't like them. I haven't had any in 30 years, so I tend to forget about them. But anyway, now all I gotta do is start cutting the mineral wool. For that, I'm gonna down on some, uh, some gloves and a mask. And I should have long sleeves on, but I don't have a long sleeve shirt out here, so maybe I can do it real easy like and cut it without the fibers going everywhere because 
this gets in your pores it's there you know they don't come out easily so you gotta wire them out so anyway let me uh, let me cut a couple of pieces of that here and we, then when I get do and I get it laid out I'll, I'll show you it's just simple it cuts with a just a, a razor knife you know just a box cutter like that right there just a razor blade just measure it out like you would a piece of wood or something and but cut it out with this all right be right back okay I've got part of it going there so anyway this is what it looks like so far and uh, hopefully you can see it so when I get that on there get this other side I'll come back and show you it's just a matter of just putting that piece on there and putting it up there and sticking that other piece on and start screwing it down all right I'll come back to you in a minute okay I'm back I got it lit and let it cure, letting it cure everything it lit right up just like it's meant to right there's what I've done to it I just put this sheet metal shroud around it I put uh, put two layers of uh, one inch uh, rock wool on the top and on the back one on the sides and I screwed everything down I still got to put some uh, I'm gonna run a couple of pieces of angle across through there and mold everything down with it let's see if I got them over here I, I planned on it I said I changed my mind on it I was gonna just use these and I thought well I might as well go ahead and insulate it with uh, and wrap it with, with mineral wool that way it'll be even it'll hold more heat in there and it'll let things cool off a lot easier now, I've got the I do have the uh, I do have the, the angle iron to, to bolt this all down and everything. I just I'm not gonna do it right now. And you can tell that around the the bell inside there were all of the uh, where it kind of broke loose in there and I'm holding it up. So it's heating and hopefully it will uh, kinda melt a little bit and, and bring it on the in there and seal it up a little better but it's it's doing a little bit of smoking there's no fire coming through there or nothing I mean think of all the fires in there and you know it is what it is it should be just fine there if I'd had another if I just let it set another couple of days it'd probably been okay as, as it was but it's still gonna be fine and uh, now flames start burning up coming up through there then I'll do something different I'll take it back apart and redo it but till then no and if you'll notice up here on this Venturi that I've got the carburetor we call it right there this right here is the only place that's getting air and there's very little crack right there you can hear it whistling you can open it up don't change a whole lot. But if you cut it down, it'll almost go out. I'm 
shut off to the point that I can choke it down with my look. Yep. It's getting a blue slow flame out through there. And that is I've never got it to go that low before without going out. Well, it's nice and quiet. Right there. So, that ought to be all right once it all cures in there. So, anyway, I'm going to let, let this burn for a little bit, and uh, I'll uh, see you on the next one. Till next time, God bless.